just one announcement today. Night to Shine registration is now open for guests. Remember, it's going to be virtual this year. So for more details, go to the church website, newhopevineyard.org. Click on the Night to Shine link or go to newhopevineyard.nighttoshine.com. All right, so check that out. We're still doing an event. It's going to be as awesome as it can be. And as usual, we're not passing the offering basket today. So we have a, we have a new box hanging on the wall right over there as you come in or exit. So uh, let's pray for the offering. Oh, Lord, we thank you for, uh, for everything. Uh, we thank you for all your provisions in life as we, uh, as we end 2020 and start 2021. We, we thank you for everything that you've uh, revealed to us throughout this year and we just uh we just continue to pray that we are uh, are being fiscally responsible and just spreading uh your your name and your glory in our community lord bless this offering in jesus name amen Last Sunday of 2020, <laughs> we made it. We're making it through. One day at a time sometimes. The hardest thing is tomorrow. So let's live for today. Jesus said tomorrow has enough worries for itself. Just live one day at a time. Sometimes it's hard. I get it. We want to uh, I want to take a few minutes here before we get started, and um, a lot of you guys know uh, Joe Rice, and he is in surgery right now, getting a new kidney. What a Christmas present, huh? So we just uh, thank the Lord for that, and uh, and we want to lift him in prayer for sure today. Um, pretty exciting stuff, and uh, we also want to pray for Ella Reaver. A lot of you have sponsored her financially. You've bought cheesecakes and things like that. And, uh, and so she's heading out in the next couple weeks and she'll be gone for the next six months. She'll be uh, in Kenya and then in Israel. And that's a heck of a long mission trip. And uh, it's taking a lot of sacrifice. She's kind of giving up her, her life for six months and uh, pretty special gal. And so even though she's not here today, we want to pray for her and lift her up at this time also. And, uh, oh, I didn't see, sorry, you got the hat and the mask. Come here. Can you, will you come here so we can, gosh, I'm sorry. It's this whole hat and mask thing. I can't find it. Come here, get up here. Get in the light where people can see you. This is Ella. Hi. Hi. Can we pray for you? Yeah. Is that cool? Can I put my hand on you? I already yeah. did, so I'm going to do it anyway. I sanitize, so it's all, <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you guys just just please bring a hand this way? If you're at home, please be praying also. And Father God, we, we just want to lift Ella to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you that she has said yes to the call. When you called her and said, I want you to step out, I want you to make this sacrifice, she stood up to be counted and said, yes, I will. And so, Father God, we pray an amazing anointing of your Holy Spirit would just fall on her now, flow on her, Lord God, from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. Protect her, Lord God. And Lord God, where her feet tread, may the gospel be spread. May her hands and feet do the work of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Father, I pray that her light would shine, that your light would shine through her in amazing ways, that she would do things that she never dreamed possible, that we know that you would get all the glory. And so just bless her, and we will miss her. We look forward to the stories that come and, and all the things you're going to do through her in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cool. Thanks, guys. We can't wait. We want to hear the stories. Are you going to put up any kind of blog or anything that we can follow? Of course, you'd be in Africa. I mean, like. Sure. Okay. 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 All right. We'll talk about that afterward. Thanks. 
So we will do our best to keep us posted here, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get to see some cool pictures and, and things like that as we continue to pray. And um, we just want to, it's just been a tough year, right? And, uh, and there's been two perspectives on, on 2020. And uh, the one perspective was, this is the worst year ever, right? I, I've seen the meme. You thought the blizzard of 78 was bad. I survived 2020. There's just numerous, I mean, if nothing else, this year has been wonderful for memes. It's not giving us anything else. We struggled, but we got through. There's the other perspective of, you know what, God is still in control. There's a perspective of 2020 has proven that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And whatever our, our perspective has brought to us and whatever this year has brought, the good, the bad, the really difficult, we can move forward in two different ways. We can move forward as a, as a victim saying, woe is me and I'm just never gonna be the same. Or we can move forward as victors in Christ saying, you know, with Christ leading the way, we're gonna put that behind us. It's hard, but we're gonna put it behind us. Are we gonna bear scars maybe? But we're gonna put it behind us and say, I'm looking forward to 2021. Let's see what God can do in me and through me. And it really is at this point, our choice to make. Individually, what am I going to do? I'm going to wake up tomorrow, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. I'm going to wake up tomorrow thankful that there's breath in my lungs. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning, Lord God, for all those gathered here, for those who are at home gathered with us. Again, Lord, we just pray the unity of the Holy Spirit be in this place and beyond that you would bind this church family together by the work of your spirit, Lord. Lord, for those of you who are out there, Father, we just pray in the name of Jesus a touch. We know there's a lot of prayer needs right now, Lord God. There's a lot of people hurting. There's a lot of people struggling. There's a lot of people with health issues. There's a lot of loss in this world, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus your peace, your comfort, your healing touch, your mighty hand. In the name of Jesus, amen. So Christmas is over. Where do we go from here? Christmas is over. Where, where do we go from here? Because when we get this this time of year, all of a sudden, the radio stations that started playing Christmas songs in October are not playing carols anymore. A friend of mine just uh, posted a thing on Facebook last week where the Kroger down by her had the big display of the Reese's Easter eggs. I said, how appalling. Could you order me two cases? <laughs> Everybody liked the Reese's eggs. The wrapping paper is all thrown in the recycling bin and the bows are all straightened out and put away for next year. The toys have been used and abused and used again and put away for the sake of the wonderful boxes that they came in, which are way more fun anyway. And even our church building is devoid of the poinsettias that once were up here and in the hallway in that. So where do we go from here? Because typically during this time of year, people say, let's put it behind us this year especially, and let's move on and see what next year brings. We start making those resolutions, right, and those promises. This year's going to be different. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to eat better. I'm going to quit lying, so let's just forget those first two. Full speed ahead. And it's good to move forward. It's good to keep our eyes forward and keep plugging along. But let's not forget the gift of the manger that we talked about earlier this week, the coming of the Christ. Let's not forget Jesus. Let's not turn away so quickly that we don't bask in the light of his love, the Christmas gift, the best Christmas gift of all. It's the power of, 
of that unconditional agape love that conquers death and sin and breaks the yoke of fear. This week, if you've been following along in the risk journal, the gift of risk, the final practice in this, the final journaling event was about this amazing love of Christ dwelling within us that saves us from ourselves, that saves us from fear. And how appropriate for this year. Today our, our scripture comes out of 1 John, uh, it's chapter 4, and if you're not familiar with, with 1 John, there's the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but then in the back of the Bible there's 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, three little letters that John wrote later on in his life. So if you want to turn, it'll be on the screen for those of you that are here. 1st uh, John chapter 4, we're going to start with verse 7 out of the New uh, International Version, and so... Follow along with me. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. If we could just stop right there, and that'd be enough to be said. Let us love one another, because love comes from God. We talk about love a lot, but it's something we need to be challenged to do, to genuinely love one another. This love that they're talking about is that agape love, that Greek word that means unconditional, unlavished, undeserved. Well, I want to love that person, but boy, are they mean. It's okay, still love them. God didn't say, hey, love them unless they tick you off. He said, love everyone as I have loved you. So love one another. Love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And this is how God loves... Sh God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we may have life through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Again, that's what we talked about last week, how the, the cradle and the cross really are the same story. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and that he in us. He has given us his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his son to be a savior to the world. And if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God, again, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how his love is made complete among us so that we have confident on the day of judgment in this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Guys, this is the word of God. Some have allowed fear to guide us through this year. Many uh, have given in to the the fear mongering and the propaganda from either side, from both sides, from all sides. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask, go to work, don't do this, go. You know, we're getting pulled in so many different ways. And right now I just want to say, you know what, I get it. And you shouldn't feel guilty or afraid or hurt. If you're at home going, you know, I just don't feel comfortable uh, leaving the house right now, I get it, that's fine. That's why we're doing the, the camera thing. You know? Don't beat yourself up. It's been on the headline on every newspaper and media outlet for the last 10 months. And it goes back to that old saying of good news is nice, but bad news sells papers. And it's easy to get caught up in the overlooming doom of the news when it's on all the time. It's on Facebook, it's on social media, there's billboards out there with stuff on. Now you cannot get away from it. So that's why we need to pick up our Bibles 
and dig into that and get closer to Jesus and get closer to the love of life that we just read about and embrace that love and let God live in us and through us and not worry so much about what everybody else is saying. That doesn't mean that we're, we, we don't use common sense. Perfect love drives out fear. That, God, that God's love, perfect love living in us. We can't do that by ourselves. We can't do that by ourselves. We need God living in us, his Holy Spirit moving in us to drive out that fear. And here's the thing, guys. If we believe that God has a plan for us and that nothing can interfere with the will of God, and if we know in our hearts that God has each one of our days numbered and it, it embraced in his mighty hands, then we can stand firm on his promises, knowing that he is on the throne and that nothing comes against us that is not within his design for us. Even the bad things, God will work for good for those who believe in our called according to his purpose. Is that right? God has a plan for me. Not just me, for, for all of us me's who are here. If we're walking in God, God has a plan for each and every one of us. That's dynamic and that's exciting and I hope you know that. And again, this doesn't mean that we foolishly test the Lord. We don't go out you know, onto the bypass and step in front of a semi and go, God will save me. And then you appear in heaven, God's going, what were you thinking? Right? I gave you common sense. God gave us a brain in here. The virus is real. Right? The virus has made a lot of people ill. It's taken many lives in our country and around the world. But guys, if we are going to imprison ourselves in our homes and keep away from friends and family and church and all that, and if we're going to live paralyzed by fear of, of whatever it is, if it's the virus or if it's something else, it doesn't matter. That's just kind of the, the, the flavor of the, well, not flavor of the month, the flavor of the year. But if we're afraid of whatever that we, we're going to die any second, if we if it paralyzes us and we can't bring ourselves to go out and, and do what we're supposed to be doing, we, we may already be dead inside. And it's time that we live again. We just read how God's love brings life. And again, it doesn't mean we abandon common sense. It doesn't mean we abandon compassion for one another. And I'm not preaching no mask. I'm not preaching wear a mask. I'm not preaching, but please wash your hands. I mean, come on, like, right? We're, we're, we're over 10. If you're over 10... You shouldn't have to be told that. Don't touch your face. But let's let God guide us in wisdom and in kindness for one another in all that we do. We get very upset. We go, man, I shouldn't have to wear a mask, or I shouldn't have to do this, or I shouldn't have to go here, or I shouldn't. And the point is, we're supposed to die to ourselves. So those I statements should really be falling away and going, what can I do for others? 1 John 4 says that God lives in us and that we live in him. So let's start living in him again. Let's wake up tomorrow morning and go, okay, I got breath in my lungs, let's do something. Let's live for him. Let's let him live in us and shine through us. And in verse 9, he, he, he writes this, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. It's the message of Christmas. We're supposed to be Christmas people all year round. That we might live through him. It's the fullness of life that was promised when Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Abundantly. It doesn't mean you get everything you want. It means he creates meaning in your life. And, and folks, there comes a point where we either believe it or we don't. So we draw the line in the sand and say, I'm going to believe this. I'm going to stand on these promises. And as the Bible says, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. 
And any of those that stand up against us will fall. Can we believe it or not? And are we, are we existing? Are we surviving? Or are we living abundantly? Again, it doesn't mean things won't come our way. It doesn't mean hardships won't happen. It doesn't mean that we won't have our heart broken. It means that we will never be abandoned, especially during those times. As humans, we're, we fear a lot of things. We have a lot of phobias. I mean, I hate heights. I don't like heights. Mm, bad. There are things, there are people that are afraid of water. There are people that are afraid of crowds. There are people that are afraid of the number 13, Tristidecophobia. Look it up. But we can't let fear rule our lives. That's not what God's called us to. Perfect love drives out fear. In 2011, I've, okay, let me back up a little real quick before I get to this story. My first Sunday here, I told this story. So if you weren't here on my first Sunday, you get to hear it. If you were here, pretend like you didn't hear it and just nod. In 2011, we had the honor of taking a bunch of crazy uh, high school and junior high uh, students to a mission trip in some of the most beautiful land in our country down in Appalachia, southern uh, Kentucky. Those hills and, and that in Kentucky, just absolutely beautiful. And part of that mission trip was you got one adventure day. You had your choice of canoeing or rock climbing. Um, and so we, we chose canoeing. And so. We grabbed our, our life vests and our paddles, and that's that awesome group of, of kids and a much younger me down there in the corner. And it was a great day. It was a beautiful day. The river was running swiftly. It was nice. We had two lifeguards with us, which was which is always a bonus. And, and so we were getting ready to take off, and one canoe after another started leaving the shore, and one of our canoes that that had Donna and another one of our leaders, Jenny, in it, uh, uh, capsized almost immediately. And Jenny came up under the canoe, which is really not a, a, a good thing. And Donna hates water, so that was not a good thing either. And, and they said, okay, we're done. <laughs> Little did we know they were the smart ones that day. And so they stayed back, though the rest of us took these awesome kids down the river. We came to one spot in the river where uh, it got really, really fast and really rough. In fact, too fast and too rough for canoes. It would have been great for like kayaking and that, uh, but it was just too much for that. And so these canoes filled with 20 or so of my teenagers were being driven uh, right into an area where there were huge rocks and boulders sticking out. Uh, it was really scary. And I was in the back of the group just watching it happen to all my kids. And they're hitting the rocks and capsizing, and I'm looking down the river, counting heads as they pop up out of the water. And uh, soon the canoe that I was in, uh, and I was in the front, and we had a kid in the back, and a, and a young lady in the, in the middle uh, videotaping, which is always fun. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, we came to this point where there was this massive boulder coming out from the shore about the size of a small school bus. And, and half the canoes are going that way, hitting that rock, and we are being driven right to it in the rapids, and, and there was no escape. And we're canoeing, we're back canoeing, we're back paddling, and, and we could not move. The, the current was just too swift um, until we were driven into the rock, and my hands went up to protect my face, and we went down under the rock very quickly. And, uh, and so it looked something a little bit like this. Sorry, at, at home, you can't see this, but it's a little five second video. But, but those are pretty heavy waves for uh, canoeing. And so we're back paddling. There's the rock sticking out on the kind of left-ish. My big fat self's in the way right now, sorry. And then there comes this point right there. And I wish you could hear the video or the, the, the audio on it because right before we hit the rock, Katie Verhagen sitting right behind me goes, oh, sweet Jesus, I love you, which is awesome because those were not the words going through my mind. We found out later that the night before they had opened the dam so that the river could flow at its fullest potential. It was deeper and faster than it had been any time that year. It was scary. 
And uh, after what seemed like uh, an eternity, we popped up about 100, 150 feet downstream with the canoes and paddles racing away from us. And I'm yelling at the kids, get to shore, get to shore, I'll get the canoe. I mean, it's not our canoe, right? So you gotta go save the canoe. That's what I was thinking. It belongs to this ministry. I'll go save the canoe. What do I know? So there's a few problems here. I am not an Olympic swimmer. Go figure. Buoyant, but not an Olympic swimmer. The current was extremely fast. The river was very, very deep at that point. And the life vest that I had, which was one of the older ones, had become ripped up. It was actually gaining water as it was pulling me down and getting heavier and heavier. I found myself hitting rapids and being bobbed up and down as water is hitting my face and in my mouth, and I really found myself being exhausted as I'm holding onto this canoe, trying to paddle it back to shore with one arm. And, uh, and then I had this epiphany and went, yeah, this is really stupid. Why am I holding onto this canoe? Why am I trying to save this giant piece of plastic? But by then, it was, it was too late. I was exhausted. I had, I had nothing left. I was barely floating, bobbing up and down. And uh, to be honest, I was, I was ready. I thought that was it. And I was ready to die. And uh, I, I, I told Jesus I was on the way. <laughs> my only concern that actually was going through my head was my concern for Donna and the kids. I didn't want them to have that, that memory of that trip. And um, I just kind of felt myself kind of going down and coming back up a little bit. It was, it was weird. And then out of the corner of my eye, I kind of caught a glimpse of our, our two lifeguard girls swimming toward me. And uh, together, we were able to grab the canoe and, and ride it up enough that I could very humbly <laughs> crawl into it as the two of them swam me to shore. And uh, that's Anna, the one gal who helped me. Thank you, Jesus. Those are my feet. And I, I had nothing left. And I was defeated. I was exhausted. And uh, as I got to shore, I, I thanked Anna and Hannah. And all I could think about there were, how are the kids? How's everybody else doing? And we were pretty far downstream by that point. And so I, I walked upstream till we got to where the canoes were. I was exa I, I, I stumbled, I crawled at one point. And um, there were kids who were in tears. I think I was there myself. There were other kids that were just stunned, sitting in awe. Then there were the teenage boys. We should do that again! If you have a teenage boy, you know the species. So we took a few moments and we rested and ate lunch and then we continued downstream at a slower pace as much as possible, taking our time and getting everybody out safely because we were really in the middle of nowhere. There was nowhere to, to get out and into safety. Um, there was actually another canoe trip planned for the next day and Anna, the, the one girl who worked for the ministry said, we're, we're not gonna do it. It's just far too unsafe. And, uh, and so the next day they, they did not do it. Um, so what's the point? Well, the point is, uh, and I really can't explain it, but for some reason I was not afraid at all. There wasn't a point where I was just, ah! I knew God had me in his hands. I knew that if worse come to worse, I would be with him that day. And I really thought I would be. I knew that, that God in one way or another would, would, would rescue me. And it came in the form that day of two 20-year-old college kids. But that day, when I almost drowned, I almost died for one reason. I would not let go of that canoe, that stupid hunk of plastic. I just couldn't let it go. By the way, the canoe did come out <laughs> without a single dent, ding, or scrape as we found it way downstream but I thought I was doing what was right. I had great intentions. This is not our canoe, I should go take care of it. 
someone else let us borrow this for the day. And even when it was dragging down, even when it was dragging me down, I couldn't let it go. I wouldn't let it go until I finally just heard God tell me to surrender. I had to surrender it, and I had to surrender myself. Folks, we tend to hold on to things, don't we? Some of them very good, some of them not so good. Some of them are good but do us bad. Some of them are good and prevent us from getting to great. Some of them are, aren't so good. Some of them are downright bad and unhealthy choices we make. We let fear of the unknown paralyze us into submitting to that fear of letting go when God is calling us to fulfill a meaningful life. We, we let the fear of letting that thing go when God is trying to free us to do greater things. And that's just our natural existence, which is why, folks, we need Jesus so badly. Because we can't do it on our own, nor were we ever meant to. We can only do it through his power. And so the question of the day, the big question, you may already know it's coming, what is God calling you to let go of today? What is God freeing you from today? What is he calling you to, or what is he calling you away from today? What is preventing you from responding or hearing that call? Because God is love, and whoever lives in love lives in God. And there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. We're about ready to leave one year behind and enter into a new year. And this is a great demarcation point, a great line in the sand when some people make resolutions of how they're going to change. But how are we going to allow God to change us? We don't have to make the change. He'll make the change. We just need to say yes. We just need to let go of the canoe. What are we going to leave behind? And so here's where we're going to do a little exercise here for just a second. If you're at home with us, do the same thing. I'm going to ask uh, John and Christopher to come back up and get ready to, as we respond in worship. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a moment right where you are, just you and God, it's your own little altar right there in front of you. And take a moment and close your eyes and close out all distraction and pray, Lord, what do I need to let go of? What is dragging me down? And this is a time to do that because here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray this prayer just right where you are and then listen. Listen to God. Listen to the Holy Spirit. You see, part of prayer is listening. So many times in, in prayer we want to just keep talking. God, give me this. I'd like this. Can I have this, God? Help me with this, Lord. But God wants to talk to us, too. Right? If we just, well, let's be honest, if we just shut up and listen. It may be something that you are struggling with or have struggled with for a long time, and you just don't feel like you're strong enough to let go. Well, we're not strong enough. We need him. It may be something that you know you've needed to let go of, but that rebellious spirit in you just keeps kicking up so many times, like, mm, pride, pride, pride. It may be uh, something that you never thought you needed to let go of. It might be something really just good in your life that you're doing, but God's saying, no, let go, because I've got something greater, and you only got two hands to hold on to. It may be something as you're praying and he speaks to you, physical, that you literally need to let go of or give away or throw away because it causes you to stumble, it causes you to sin. It may be something that you need to give to God because it's emotional, fear, pride, anger, grief, guilt. Give it away today. 
It may be something, uh, a certain way of thinking, realizing that we don't know everything, but instead that we need to embrace the mindset of God. So whatever it is, whatever it is, we're going to pray this prayer. We're going to listen. And then I'd like for you to take a, a scrap piece of paper. If you don't have one with you, there's connection cards, there's envelopes in the seat back. Feel free to use those. If you have your prayer journal, maybe you want to put it in there. Uh, if you're at home, grab a piece of paper, grab out your journal, whatever, and write down what God tells you to let go of. Even if you don't understand it, even if he gives you like this visual, this image, and you're like, okay, why am I, you know, maybe, okay, total just hypothetical. Maybe he gives you this vision of a, a, a bright red balloon. And you go, I need to let go of the balloon? What does that mean? Maybe we don't know now, but maybe a few months from now, something's going to happen. You go, that's what he was trying to tell me. He speaks in all sorts of ways. Sometimes it takes a while for us to hear it and understand so grab that, that scrap piece of paper and get ready to write down what he's put. So let's just take a few moments, and again, wherever you are, make your altar right there, and let's just pray. Lord, what do I need to let go of? What is dragging me down? Take a few minutes now. What do I need to give to you today, Lord? What's been dragging me down? What do you want to take from me? Because you are a good God. And you don't want us to weigh us down. Let's open our eyes. That we would know, that we would see. Give us a, a visual. Give us a word. Lord God, we want to hear from you today. So take a few moments and listen. Take a few minutes. Take your piece of paper if and write it down. What do you need to give away? I need to get rid of that, Lord. Again, it may just be a word that you don't even know what it means right now, or a picture that you don't even know what it means right now. And if if you haven't heard anything yet, that's okay. But keep praying this until you do hear something. Because we all have something we need to let go of. And when you get that word or the image or the visual, we're going to pray, I am giving you whatever it is. I'm giving this to you today. Free me to do greater things for you in 2021. Take that piece of paper. And put it somewhere where you'll find it again. Again, if it's in your journal, you'll get back and, and look at that later. But if you just took a piece of scrap paper, put it in, in your Bible or in your wallet, in your purse, ladies. Wherever, somewhere that you'll just casually pick it up again and look at it and go, that's what he's taken from me. Or that's what he has taken from me. Or that's what he's working on me to take from me this year. 
let's do it. Let's let go. Don't let it drag you down. Don't let it drown you. Take a lesson from my minor stupidity. Let's just go there. And let go of the boat. God's got you. God's got you in his hands. So sometime in this next coming year when you stumble across it, you're going to have a couple different responses. One is like, wow, I don't even think I even realized it, and he took it from me. Cool. And then you, you praise the Lord right there, and you give him thanks, and you put that where you'll see it somewhere again. Because on your darkest days when you really need it, he'll bring it back again. And say, look what I brought you through. You may pick it up and go, man, I'm still working on this. God, I need your help to do this. I need to give this to you. And that's okay, too. Sometimes it takes a little more of a process. But don't give up, because he's not giving up on you. Maybe you just forgot about it. Maybe you'll pick it up and go, oh, I forgot all about this, Lord. Man, I need to do it. I need to give it to you today. That's okay. Just take another moment and quietly be with the Lord. Prayer is a very simple thing. Just like talking to a friend. Dialogue with God. Talk and listen. Talk and listen. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear our prayers. Hear our prayers. Lord, we, we take a moment today, Lord God, to let go of the boat. Help us. We need to let go, Lord. Help us not to drown. And for those who are already drowning, Lord God, come and save us. Come and rescue us, Lord God, and bring us back to shore. We desperately need you. We are hurting, we are broken, we are desperate, and we want more of you today, Lord God. Come, hear our prayer. Free us, Lord, to be the people you have called us to be. We're tired. We can't do it by ourselves. And so we say, I surrender. I surrender all to you, Lord God. I can't do it. I surrender. And to surrender, we have to raise our hands and let go of what we're holding on to. I surrender. And as we sing this song, let that be our prayer today. I surrender. And if you need prayer today, there's going to be some folks up front that will pray with you. And please just come and receive prayer if you need it today. Surrender, Lord. Here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all. Here I am, down on my knees again, surrendering all. Surrendering all. Find me here. Find me here, Lord, as you draw.